Welcome to this Halloween edition of DAZ Football Friday, everyone. I'm Phil Newman. This was a guy who had played in at least 38 games in each of his first three seasons at UND. Nice. Along with a 4.33 GPA, Jace has also gone on three mission trips with his church. Most of them now have one of these, these green rally towels they've been handing out, which say the words, finish the fight on them. Oh! Oh! Easy as that. They're your classic case of getting hot at the right time. Just one week ago, speaking to head coach Jason Gregory, he said they were trying to find consistency. Now the Riders are the EDC champs. His 235 rush yards are the most by any UND running back since Ryan Chappell in 2007. Well, let's be honest, most Vikings fans aren't as concerned with the team's draft strategy as they are with how the Adrian Peterson situation will ultimately end up. Seven Frozen Four appearances in the last 11 years, the most of any program during that time span. Reporting from the Frozen Four in Boston, Phil Newman, WDAZ Sports. Good evening, everyone. The first night of the North Dakota State Hockey Tournament is not yet in the books. If you missed Central and Red River highlights at 6, we'll get to them in a minute. But on the boys' side, we start with Devil's Lake. Holden Kurtz and the Firebirds taking on Minot in their first state tournament appearance since 07. They don't waste any time. 11 seconds in, Chris Dahlin off the pass from Ryan Rule. But just three minutes later, it's Easton Bennett for Minot knocking in the rebound to tie it at one. Both goalies have been stout since. The winner will face South Shanley after its upset of Bismarck Century. Century. Earlier in the day, a heartbreaking finish for Bill Chase and Red River. Tied at one in the waiting seconds of the second. Jake Heinert gives Bismarck the lead. Red River trying to tie it up in the third, and they think they do. Brock Montgomery puts it in the back of the net, but wait. It's waved off. Bill Chase getting the explanation. It's ruled that Tony Haley interfered with the goaltender, Bismarck moves on to the state semis. And waiting will be Grant Peronica and the Grand Forks Central Knights after Cole Kirchhoffner went off this afternoon. Second period puts the Knights up 2-0. And then in the third, he tips in his third of the game, a hat trick for Kirchhoffner, setting up a rematch of last season's state championship. Central and Bismarck meet tomorrow night in the semis. So we had Kirchhoffner with a hat trick. Not to be outdone on the girls' side was Peyton Lenore of the Grand Forks Knight Riders. Here Lenore finishes her own rebound to tie the game at one. The Knight Riders trying to get by Mandan in the state corners. Second period, Grand Forks shorthanded, and it's Lenore again. She had a team-high 15 goals during the regular season. Puts Grand Forks up 2-1 to one there, and she's not done. From the circle, the wrister finds its way through. The Knight Riders advance to face West Fargo, who beat Davies in overtime. Now we go to Minnesota and the Section 8A Boys Championship game up in Warro. This was a great one. Thief River Falls trying to dethrone defending champ East Grand Forks. Up 2-1 in the second period, and now they're up 3-1 after Zeb Nelson, but back comes the wave. Grant Loven makes it 3-2, and then Dixon Bowen ties it at 3. We're headed to overtime, where it's an unlikely hero for East Side. Reed Jelly, his first career goal, sends East Grand Forks to state. I was just shell-shocked. I just tried to get the puck on net, and it luckily went in. We just, all our seniors worked really hard, and everyone worked hard. We just wanted to go to state so bad, so we wanted it so much. Now to the court, a trip to the state tournament on the line between North Star and Lakota Edmore tonight. The same matchup as last year in Fallon Freegi is still cool under pressure. Nails the jumper to at the end of the first quarter. Second quarter, Stephanie Miller hits the triple to tie the game. She had 17, but Fallon Freegi had 47 of Lakota Edmore's 67, helping the Raiders to the state tournament for the third time in four years. UND men's basketball has lost five straight, its longest losing streak in more than four years. Second half, Lenny on tweeted Jerron Nash. Oh, Lord. Seems like he does that every game. 12 points for Nash. UND down five, down nine, and in need of a bucket when Quentin Hooker delivers, plus the foul. 20 points for him, but UND had no answer for Chris Yonku. 24 points and 12 dimes 
UND drops it six straight, 85-75. In the Minnesota 8A tournament, boys Winnie Mac and KCC get wins. Stephen Argyle and Northern Freeze also with wins. First round of the 8AA tournament, Crookston and Park Rapids advance. East Grand Forks and BGMR both go down tonight. And in North Dakota, girls basketball south over central, Red River big over north. In boys basketball, central and Red River go down on the road. A busy night, an exciting night. Here, the point guard referred to as the facilitator, the director of a team's offense. Well, in the case of Micah Freeze, perhaps we should call him the author, writing the story for the Green Wave boys basketball team. Our hometown star series continues tonight with a senior from East Grand Forks. I've been playing for as long as I can remember. I think that I have the ability to lead, which, um, you know, it's not shooting or dribbling, but it's something that um, really helps the whole team. Micah Freeze has also helped East Grand Forks by averaging 17 points and five assists per game this season. And this year, his, his role has increased. He's always been a very, very capable shooter. He does a, a very good job of getting our team organized and the guys look at him as a leader. Micah and East Grand Forks were Section 8 AA champions last year, but aside from basketball, Micah's also made a hobby of authoring books. The 507 story, that one is my favorite. It's about, um, it's a true story of um, my trip to Ethiopia that I took with my church in 2013. A trip that Micah calls the best experience of his life. For me personally, it makes me want to be a better person. It doesn't surprise me that he volunteers to do things like that. He'll take time to go and coach up a, a ninth grader. He'll, he'll sit on the bench during our ninth grade teams. The author of three books, a missionary, and a basketball standout make Micah this week's WDAZ hometown star. I think the example that he sets trickles down to each grade level. Though people watch him on you know, the way he handles himself, and I think it's something that will continue to move on. Micah is planning to return to Ethiopia this March with his church. He also says he's pretty much set on attending Bemidji State next fall. May want to enter the field of sports writing. If you've watched Red River this season, you've probably seen the quarterback Derek Murph throw a touchdown to one of his big, tall receivers. So I went over to Cushion Field to see just how the riders throw their favorite route. Okay, just I say hut, and then it's just that. Right there. And then, then throw it. And then you're trying to put it up high so he can go get it. Yep. Red River quarterback Derek Murph has thrown 14 touchdowns this season, and a vast majority of them are off what's called the fade. Uh, fade is just the deep ball, I guess. I throw it up high, and as far as I can, and Braden usually goes gets it. Braden Hansen is six foot six and has been on the receiving end of seven of Murph's touchdown passes this season, more than half via that fade ball. I just try to get to the corner and I just hope the ball is in the air and if it's in the air and if it's up a high, I just try to jump over people and grab it. We get the mismatch with the height. We had some tall receivers, basketball kids that started coming out. So we figured we'd take advantage of our height the mismatches, which uh, there's not a lot of kids over uh, six feet playing DB. Red River has turned to the fade time and time again this season. And one of the big reasons is because of the comfort level Murph has with the throw. The reason I'm so comfortable with it is because he's so tall. I mean, I, put, I could put it anywhere and his arms can reach it. Now, I wanted to get a taste of throwing a fade to Hanson for a touchdown. So I had Murph warm me up and then coach me up. And then I felt like I was ready. All right, so we're on the five. I'm just going one step. Yep. And then just put it up for the big man. That's, that's the easy part, yep. All right, Brandon, you ready? Yep. Sit, hut. Oh. Oh. Easy as that. 